The Peruvian desert conceals the large bones of ancient creatures, a graveyard containing dozens of well-preserved skeletons of baleen whales that used to live here. Five to ten million years ago, the dry and dusty region around the city of Pisco was a thriving underwater paradise. In any normal circumstance, these creatures would be large animals, but compared to their modern relatives, they are tiny, the skeletons rarely exceeding 7 meters, a fraction of the size of almost any modern baleen whale. However, these tiny whales were definitely not the oddest animals to be found here. There were also marine sloths larger than people that dove into the ocean in search of aquatic vegetation, or strange relatives of dolphins that looked like walruses with one long tusk, and marine fish-eating crocodiles related to India's gharials, only much larger. This collection of fossils offers a snapshot of what the marine environments were like when the largest shark that has ever existed was still alive and commonly found among the bodies of whales are the unmistakable giant arrow teeth of Megalodon, showing it was a frequent visitor to the ecosystem. One of the whales in this ecosystem was named Pisco Baleena that had serrated wounds across its skull and jaw that matched the imprint of Megalodon teeth. It was a victim of one of the most powerful predators that has ever lived. Seeing how famous Megalodon is, you'd think these types of fossils are common, but they are actually extremely rare, and this is actually the first direct evidence of megalodon prey in the southern hemisphere, and one of only a handful of megalodon bite marks known about globally. This shows that megalodon is almost certainly the most famous prehistoric creature that we still don't fully understand what they were eating. The Pisco ecosystem existed in a time in the Earth's history known as the Miocene, that took place from 5 to 23 million years ago. During this time, baleen whales were much smaller, and they only reached their giant current sizes just before Megalodon went extinct, around 3 to 4 million years ago. They were smaller, but also more diverse. Many of them, named the Cetotheridae, were not closely related to modern whales, but the ancestors of modern whales were small at this time as well. For example, in the Pisco Formation are the remains of a whale named Inca Cahira, which was from the Rorqual family, the whale family that contains the largest whales that exist today, like the fin and blue whale. However, just like the other whales from the time period, it was also very small, being at most 7 meters long, a fraction of the size of a modern blue whale. It has long been suspected that these little baleen whales were a major food source for Megalodon, and although direct evidence of Megalodon's feeding behavior are rare, the Peruvian specimen is not the only bit of evidence that Megalodon probably did hunt these whales fairly regularly. There are several specimens of whale vertebrae and flippers known from the northeastern coast of America, with large shark serrations likely made by Megalodon, and one of these American whale fossils even shows that the whale may have survived. The whale has serration marks on its ribs that have been slightly covered by a bony outgrowth, and this has been interpreted as the wound receiving an infection while partially healing. Pisco Bailina was just 5.5 meters long, making it only a little larger than a bottlenose dolphin, and although most of the American whale remains were from slightly larger animals, they were also still small by baleen whale standards. This means that Megalodon preferred to eat prey much smaller than itself, and this is not actually that unsurprising. For such a famous fish, the exact size and appearance of Megalodon is not known. Remains of its body are extremely rare, and the shark is known almost exclusively from its teeth, and this is a common pattern in many prehistoric sharks, as their cartilaginous skeleton does not preserve well. Megalodon size estimates come from various different methods of using its plentiful teeth or the odd preserved vertebrae and then scaling up using its relatives like great whites and mako sharks. This makes finding an exact size extremely challenging, but even the most conservative estimates have the shark's maximum size at at least 15 meters. However, the mean size of these sharks in the ocean at one time, including juveniles and males, was probably just over 10 meters. So if Megalodon was eating 5 to 7 meter long whales, then proportionately to their body size, it ate very similar sized prey to modern day great whites, as the various seal species that make up their favorite food are also usually a lot smaller. This is a very small sample size to work with, but seeing as almost all known wounds inflicted by Megalodon are found on small baleen whales, the assumption these whales were a big part of their diet is probably true, in at least some ecosystems. However, this doesn't tell the whole picture. Certain animals change their diet as they grow older. This is known as an ontogenetic shift, and it happens to great whites. 
that as adults specialize in hunting marine mammals like seals, but as juveniles they specialize in eating completely different types of prey, like various species of fish and stingray. Megalodon was probably similar, and were most likely too small to hunt whales as juveniles, so may have been eating something else. Furthermore, Megalodon lived for an incredibly long time. They first appeared in the fossil record in the earliest parts of the Miocene, over 20 million years ago, and didn't go extinct until around 3.5 million years ago, which is an extremely long time for an apex predator to exist. Big predators tend to be few in number, breed slowly, and as they require a lot of energy, are very dependent on healthy ecosystems. All this meaning they often don't last very long. During the Megalodon's long reign, enough time passed for the ecosystem around them to change quite drastically, which may have meant they had to change their diet along with it. Finally, it is unlikely that such a large predator would have been hunting in one place. Megalodon was a lambda form, or a mackerel shark, which are capable of a sort of warm-bloodedness named regional endothermy, where they are able to keep specific organs or sections of their body warm. These sharks are able to do this by being super efficient with the heat produced by their large tail muscles, and then feeding it to their most important organs. This is why lamniforms like great whites can swim in much more temperate waters than some of the other large sharks. However, some mackerel sharks, like blue sharks and basking sharks, have both been observed as far north as Norway and southern Alaska. Since Megalodon was a lamniform, it was thought that it may have been capable of something similar, and study of the chemical compounds in their teeth have shown that they may have been able to keep their body temperature higher than their surroundings, like some modern sharks, and so may have had a global distribution dining on regional prey. Fossil evidence of predator-prey interactions like bite marks on fossils of Megalodon's victims, or maybe preserved stomach contents from other marine animals are amazing because they really help visualise what these monstrous fish and other giant marine predators were like. However, they do have limitations. As they only really offer a snapshot, they can't tell as much about seasonal variability or changes in diet over time or with the age of the animal. Plus, they have weaknesses in sample bias. For example, they may lead us to believe that the predator ate a lot of a certain type of animal that just happens to fossilise really well. However, there are other methods of finding out what long dead animals were eating. For instance, an animal's diet can give them a distinct level of nitrogen that can be measured. Specifically, the more nitrogen 15 they have will mean they have a higher trophic level, or are higher on the food chain. Producers like plants and algae take in nitrogen from their surroundings, and then when this is eaten by other animals, the consumers, they also take this nitrogen and will incorporate it into their body. However, preferentially excrete lighter nitrogen isotopes like nitrogen-14, which means that the further up the food chain you go, the heavier nitrogen-15 accumulates. This means that an animal's heavy nitrogen signature will be higher the more meat-based their diet is, or higher still if the animals they eat are also predators and so on. This method can also be used on the remains of ancient creatures to give us clues about what ancient ecosystems were like. Many teeth from Megalodon and some of their close relatives were studied, and they were found to have a very high trophic level. High enough that they would have been eating a lot of other predatory animals. This is at odds with them predating mostly on small baleen whales, as at least modern baleen whales usually have fairly medium trophic levels. The level of heavy nitrogen in their teeth was not just higher than a great white, but higher than almost any living animal. The only comparable living creatures are specific populations of some polar bears and killer whale species, feeding in very specific regions, but the trophic level of the average megalodon far exceeds the average of both of these animals. It could have been that megalodon engaged in cannibalism. Although rare, cannibalism has been observed in some modern shark species, so this can't be completely ruled out. However, a preferred explanation is that during Megalodon's time, marine animals in general were feeding from higher up the food web. During the Miocene, there was a greater diversity of large predatory marine mammals than there is today, specifically the raptorial sperm whales, that were relatives of modern sperm whales but specialised on hunting and feeding near the surface, like modern day killer whales. Also, the baleen whales at the time may have been eating a different diet to the baleen whales of today. The smaller baleen whale species that live today, like minke whales and humpback whales, feed heavily on krill, but are less fussy than other species, and routinely eat other small creatures like small fish and squid when the time calls for it. This more generalist feeding behaviour gives them a higher trophic level than the much larger krill specialists like blue whales. So it's possible that small Miocene baleen whales may have also eaten a more varied diet, like the smaller whales today, driving up their level of nitrogen driving up Megalodon's nitrogen. 
There are also some other interesting patterns in the data too. For instance, it wasn't just that Megalodon's trophic level was very high, but it also varied a lot among the different specimens. This could have meant that Megalodon had quite a generalist feeding behaviour and different members of the species targeted different prey in the same ecosystem, but it could also be evidence of an ontogenetic shift in diet, and when they got older they started eating different prey. So although there are definitely clues about what these giant creatures were eating and how they interacted with the animals they share the ocean with, including even direct fossil evidence, there are still a lot of unknowns that will need more discoveries to uncover. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.